Alright, we are live with the game, so welcome everyone once again to the ESCA Land Finals here. It's Na'Vi versus Manajuma on Season as the first map in a best of three. And we've got, well, Manajuma probably the, the, the more unknown in these two teams, but still, I think they've made an impression on a lot of people from their online performances recently. Yeah, so we had the chance to watch Shroud there in the All-Star game, and he played pretty well for the most part. We'll see what he can do throughout this game. But right now, as you mentioned, our first map is going to be DE Season. Following that is going to be Dust 2, and if needed, we'll be on DE Inferno. And so to start things off, uh, let's see how Manajubas, whether or not they can uh, penetrate over here towards that B-bomb site. They do trade evenly at the moment, and actually that leaves B kind of alone. It's going to be... Uh it's going to be Nasarix here, trying to see if he can get something done. He's going to try. Oh, he runs back and gets the headshot, and Guardian picks up two great headshots, and a third wow. one to follow. Deborn is down. Guardian single-handedly, all three headshots, and Na'Vi win the pistol round. And that's exactly what you need to start things off, to start off the day uh, there for Na'Vi. We were waiting for Na'Vi to hop into the server earlier, and so one of the things that was kind of it was great to watch is just how they were collectively, they were grouped up, they were watching. Uh, over the top of their leader and making sure that they go over each of the callouts, different point, pinpoints, different strategies that they're going to go into play here, taking this one extremely serious. And you see Guardian already starting off with that mid pick with a scout. Yeah, we'll see. At least he's really going to try and see if he can do it. And that's a bit of a strange pickup, isn't it? We've got Guardian with a scout. We've got Senia with a with dual elites. I mean, this is weird. Not sure I, w I was expecting that. And I'm really wondering how. I would have thought that this would have been the map that Manajuma would want to play. Well, I'm not sure who did the map picks exactly, but um, as far as I know, it's uh, it's season, it's dust two, and it's Inferno at, as the deciding map. So I would say that this would be a map that Manajuma would want to try and win. We'll see. Starix actually alone over here, which is interesting. Just uh, nobody with him. Everyone else is either mid or at the A bomb site. With an M4A1 as well, he's only got 20 bullets. If they rush him down. He could run out of bullets before he can even kill anyone. He sees the first person, then it's going to fall back. And Grenade is out. They're going to run right into that, and it does tremendous damage. They keep coming, and he gets a double kill, which actually, I don't know, could have been even better, but still, he did a lot. They get the bomb down, though, so for Manajuma, this is already a victory. A smart play there, at least just getting that opening kill that, to allow them to push into that B-bomb site. They've already got to the point where they wanted to be, getting that bomb planted inside of the B-bomb site. Oh, Deborn has a weapon. He's running about. They may be able to check him out. Also, Desi has a weapon there. Deborn taking out. This is a complete turn here as it's down to. There is going to be a player inside the site. He is on the defuse, and he will get the headshot. Deborn picking up three in the round after picking up that M4. And so what we expected Na'Vi to be able to hold there, as Sark started off with picking up two kills, they ended up picking up the round after a slow rotate from Na'Vi. So the really bizarre thing that we just saw is that two of the Na'Vi players actually ran this way into the bomb site, and somehow Deborn ended up here, and he ran this way around. He actually ignored the two players. I'm sure he could have just turned around and got the kills, but he decided to take the long way. He still got all the kills and prevented the defuse. That was a very, very intense last one on two then. Looked definitely like the defuse was going to happen, but it didn't. Now Na'Vi back to armor and pistols, and one for Mars, in fact, on Seuss. Yeah, so now we can see exactly how they've already started to set up. Deborn going to continue that streak over into this round, but look out as he's been able to pick up one. Here comes around the AK. They'll be able to pick that bomb pack up. Zeus out inside of mid with the FAMAS tapping away. Minicare finally able to shut things down. That's going to be down to this three on two. Guardian with a, just the deagle here in the bomb site. No head armor for him, but he does have that hand cannon. Doesn't even matter. Desi's going to take him down, and it will be Starix alone. In a one-on-three, and you did mention uh, Shroud as being uh, being one of the guys already. We, you know, we're only th three rounds in, so not really going to panic yet. But I think Shroud is the guy to watch for uh, for Manajuma. He must be the uh, he's the, he's the he's the hard hitter here. Definitely the star of the team, I'd say. Not alone. He's not like some teams where you have just one player who's able to perform. But I think overall, it's uh, it's maybe going to be Shroud to carry them through if it's going to happen. 2-1 is a pretty good start for Manajuma, but this is uh, actually a terrorist sided map, all things considered. It's a little bit easier to play the terrorist side because it's really hard for the CTs, especially if you lose this mid-control of the map, then things really start to go downhill. The Season is a map that a lot of people don't know because it's a map mostly played in Source and not so much in 1.6. Well, right. not at all, really. Right, so one of the things that uh, we'll see here, you're going to have Deborn. He's going to spot one. I don't know if he's spotted. He knows that there's four players that are going to be chasing after him. 
tapping. White picks up his second, looking for his third. He's picked up three so far. And uh, now it's going to be left up to Sinia down to this one on four. All right. So, I mean, Corey, at, at this point, Navi already have, they have a ton of land experience. And Manajuma, maybe not so much. They're also playing against the team that they won the SLTV Star Series finals. They've done a lot of stuff. Uh, Navi recently, they, they made it all the way to the finals at DreamHack. Um, and obviously, they lost to NIP in the end. But, but that is what it's down to. So. For, for Mana Juma to get this kind of good start, I mean, do you think that's going to help them mentally when, you know, just getting rid of those nerves and, and getting off to a nice start here? Being able to pick up the first few rounds will definitely help, but really whenever we start to get into this first real gun round that we're about to see here, that's going to really tell the tale. As, uh, you know, that will allow us to know if whether or not Jumos can sit there and start to figure out if they're good enough or not. Uh, but uh, being able to pick up that second round definitely helped out a lot. And especially if they just somehow pick up this first map, it will help. Yeah, definitely. That would be a huge thing, I think, for them. Because I think they're going to be pretty good on Dust, too. Now, Starix in the corner. Again, with the M4A1, he's going to take down Mitika. But then Deborn comes in. That's the ninth kill of this game for him. He's 9-0 and 2. That's an incredible score already. The bomb is going to go down. And a headshot straight through the smoke on Guardian puts him down to 11. This is looking really good for the NA team. They've already got four players there set up around. They're watching a, the backside there. That's going to be Shroud who is taking down Zeus. It looks like Navi has decided to go ahead and bail out. Yeah, going to go right. ahead and save these weapons and be able to hold them on for the next round. And Dibor can go chasing. He's been able to pick up multiple kills here in the game. And I believe he dropped that M4, that Colt there, for his teammate Shroud earlier in the round. So, I've, you know, already, the, the second round, because Navi won the piss round because and of that Deborn great does triple. pick up that kill there. Oh, they get the kill on Guardian, actually, you're right. Oh, oh well, that's that was so very close. close there, too. So, really, you can see how Jumas have set up. They have picked up that first gun round, so now we're sitting at 4-1. to one. So, something I've noticed already is that Starix is actually alone most of the time at the beginning of the round in this B-bomb side. And it feels like maybe Man and Juma have realized this too. Because in the second round, they already pushed it and they saw that he was alone. They did it this round too, and that might be a problem. I mean, with an M4A1, you can't really kill five people unless they're all headshots. And that's just exactly. too much to ask. Basically, get allotted four bullets per player from that point. Yeah. It's a little bit too tricky, isn't it? And so right now we do have a player that's uh, pushed up there inside. Look out for Steve's pushing around. He's able to take down Deborn from the flank. Came all the way around through the door to shut down Deborn, and Desi falls as well. So that's obviously a, a really a big switch up here from Navi, just pushing aggressively, trying to get the information, not just waiting around for Manajuma. And the return's still going to come. Miniga picking up two good kills here, but it's not going to be enough, I think. He's got very little HP. And in a one on two on this map, I mean, look at all the angles he has to check here. And Seized is still going on the flank now, but that's not going to matter here as Starks picks up that last kill. So now it's going to be four to two. Starting to pick up, uh, helping their case now here for Navi. But like you had mentioned, that, that B bomb site in the early part of the round, Starks is just the only player in that rotation. The time that it takes to rotate over towards that B-bomb site is just not enough. And then it's from there, it's pretty easy to defend on the opposing side, yeah. watching that upper and lower area there inside of that B-bomb site. Yeah, the rotation time from A to B is definitely a key point of this map. It takes so long. If you only move once your player and B goes down, that's too late. Guardian here. Oh, he gets the leg shot on Irukandi, but they're still going to be rushing into this A-bomb site. Seems like there's a lot of speed for Manajuma, and I like that. I mean, if they wait around for, for Na'Vi to find out where they are, that might be a problem. So a perfect fire that was dropped there by Na'Vi, slowing down this push. Uh, it looks like they're just going to kind of try to take their time now, dropping that bomb over the cross. I believe Guardian's probably still inside of mid, watching to see if they decide to rotate back towards that B-bomb site. C is able to pick up one. And we'll see if uh, they're still taking it. complete advantage of the time that's given to them here. Yes, Senia going down. Guardian gets a shot in the middle, but actually the A bomb side is kind of exposed. Guardian actually is going to rotate back around. If Seuss goes down here, that's going to be a big problem. But Manajuma have time, and if Yurikanji can get in here and clear the B bomb side, no, they're just going to push without it. Bombs down. Now Yurikanji's alone. I kind of wish they had I waited for him here. I have, it doesn't make any sense of why they decided to go ahead and push up, especially this puts Yurikanji in a really tough spot. Uh, trying to determine whether or not he can be able to pick up some kills here. 25 seconds left here, and he will get dropped. 
really have no clue. Again, the same situation applies to a terrace that decides to kind of rotate all the way over towards the B side and have to rotate back to the A side. It takes forever, especially the fact that you don't get the opportunity to run across because if you run, then you're going to be heard and taken out. I'm sort of wondering if um, if what they were thinking is, okay, if we get the kill on the A bomb side, we put down the bomb, then by the time that bomb is down, your is going to be somewhere in the CT spawn, and he's going to be able to batch them. That's thinking really far ahead. That's, would, that's too much. He would have to walk a very long way. He yeah. probably would have continued to walk all the way up until the point where they got the bomb planted. I'm liking this, because I think this is the first time we've seen anyone from Jumas actually go into the vent area here over just try and see if you can look out. And that's obviously a, a key part of the map and something that's very sort of unique when it comes to season is this whole event area where you can look actually, you can look pretty far from here and, and get a good uh, idea of what's happening in the middle of the map. And yeah, you'll be able to catch them on a rotate if they decide to move from one side to the next. You can see that this this round changed up a little bit here for Na'Vi. Yeah. They actually had Zeus that joined up there with Starks. And, but uh, looks like Senya's already starting to push up over there inside of the A side. Yeah, he's a little bit further forward, just trying to see if he can catch anyone. But still, not a lot of information for Na'Vi. Now they know a little bit. Star X is going to spot one and then smokes out. I kind of like this move more than the previous. He's played this before where he just fell back. And this smoking up, I think, is a lot better. That's going to buy a lot of time for, uh, for Na'Vi. Definitely a smart move. Now he's going to have to fall back. You know, smokes are so effective at times. We'll pick up one there, Stacey, with the return, and Starix, he gets one more. He needs back up quick. Oh, he does take down a double, and that might actually be enough, but look at this once again. It's Jumas with this incredible flanking plan where they're going to have the bomb down with Shroud. He needs to kill Seize before anything else happens. If he does, then maybe Deborn can be here in time. Shroud able to pick that one there into Seize. Now down to this two-on-two. Two. Guardian and Sinia left alive here for Na'Vi. Have a decent setup. Shroud's having to watch two different angles at the same time. Nice shot by Deborn. Now it's going to be left up to Guardian. Guardian oh, tried to uh, mouse one, but he couldn't there. And now the time is ticking away. It's in favor of Deborn right here. Oh, yeah, no he's doubt. He's waiting it out now. And this time he's going to decide to go ahead and stick this one. And it looks like he will get the defuse. And again, Deborn overthinking things. And Guardian will get the defuse there. And it will take out the op out of his hands. But in the end, Guardian sticking that defuse, picking up the round, and tying things back up. Oh, that's a painful way to lose a round. It really is, because they had that almost locked down. But it's, you know, you got, you're so nervous, especially peeking against Guardian. Such a high chance that he will hit that shot. At least they got the off way, but still, that was probably around that. I mean, this should have been 5-3 instead. It was a miscalculation on the time of the defuse. He heard him on that last defuse. He had to stick that defuse from that point. He didn't have to throw out the flashbang and try to draw him out. He could have went straight for the defuse. Our apologies, he could have went for the diffuser and took out Guardian yeah. and be able to pick up that round. He had to stick it at that point, but right now it's already going to be down to a four on three, and it looks like they are, have been able to get into that B bomb site. So they found a weak point on Navi. Yeah, and now they're just drilling it, and I like this. If it works, just keep doing it. There's no reason to change up. As long as they can rush B and make it work, it's absolutely worth doing it. Although they are all very low, I think this is going to be almost impossible for Navi to make it in here. They need to go so fast if they want to have any chance of it. Good smoke up over there. Looks like they're kind of going for this retake. They did have a good... And looks like uh, they will fall back. They don't have the time. So that was a nice idea on the smoke. Uh, but again, they don't have the time to get that defuse in, especially to eliminate all four players. And right there, that kind of gave the Navi a sign that there was two players that were really, really low on health to die to that bomb. Yeah, that... It's really, I mean, if they ever rewatch the demo, that's going to be annoying knowing that they basically had killed four people, but not quite. And that's another round for Manajuma. And getting a smart move by Na'Vi to move back, saving those three rifles means they can pretty much buy up in this round and they're going to be all right. Otherwise, they would have uh, they would have some issues with that. Actually, oh, they actually go for CZ-75s and armor instead of any kind of FAMAS buy. AC Guardian with that op. So they're really trying to take a chance here. Playing extremely aggressive right now over there towards that catwalk side. Spots one. There goes Miniker. He's going to fall. Now they're going to assume immediately that somehow Na'Vi has weapons of all sorts. They're not going to understand that Starks and Zeus have that CZ, as you say, yeah. the CZ there in their hands. 
Starry spots one, so now they definitely know they're in the jail area and they're gonna keep pushing, actually trying to see if they can take down Yurokanji, who's in that corner. They will take him down, but then the double spray down. Desi drops them and now, well, they still have that mid control. Seize is gonna go down and once again, it's in the favor of Manajuma here. If they can just get the bomb down, they'll be, they'll be winning this round. You see them rotating back over there towards that B side. That's Senya to join up with Guardian. Yeah. Looks like they are. Looks they have uh, decided to rotate back over here towards the A side. So Sinya, he's going to rotate back over here inside of the mid area, trying to take a look there through the bottom of the smoke. He spotted one. Can he be able to pick up the second? No, as now Guardian is going to have to be on a quick rotate. 30 seconds left here in the round, and Guardian just misses that slim chance to be able to get that pick. Yeah, so Senia, he wasn't looking for a quarter or anything on the ground. You're absolutely right. He was trying to look through the smoke because you can do that. Grenade to follow. Actually, a little on the wrong side oh, of the box. No. So now Guardian is in some trouble. All they have to do is stand still, and they should be able to just wait him out here. Exactly. There's no reason to peek, especially knowing that he has an off in hand. Perfect flashbang. He might fake this one out now, so be ready. Oh, Shroud, this is really smart That's play. He's just though. waiting. Guardian has to push, and when he does, Shroud is ready to take him down. That was the situation, especially now that we're talking about land experience and the pressure of playing against such a good team. If there was, a, if there were any cracks in the foundation, I'd expect it to come out in that situation, where Shroud is just hiding in a corner, and he could definitely have a temptation to peek up really early then. That's Cur good. I'm curious why they decided to go ahead and peek around that box, but again, it's they're getting caught up in the moment trying to make something happen for their team, but in the end, Shroud picking up that last kill onto Guardian. Guardian did a great job opening up that round, though, and now we'll see he's going to get dropped early in this one, though. Yeah, another kill coming in. Desi with a quick double goes for the triple, and he'll get all three. Even if it's only pistols right now, it's still a pretty fine job. The really funny thing is that Starix is about to find the bomb over at the T-spawn. It's not going to matter because he's not going to be able to cover it, but he did a double take. Just Wait a minute, they left something here. I'll be in the perfect spot. They'll never expect me to be hiding behind this box. And there they are. And they will not expect him to be behind the box. And just like that, we may have a different type of situation here. A, lot, a very difficult situation for Starks to watch multiple angles. Yeah, and no armor as well. They do One. hear him. And he'll be able to take down a third. He's just continuing to spray away, check, making sure that there's nobody down here in the lower area. That area is cl completely clear, but now it's down. He knows where both of them are at, deciding to continue to peek. And wow, it made it a lot more uh, crucial than what it could have been as uh, he took down three members there for Manajumas. Let's listen, listen in to these guys there for Manajumas and what they think. All the way through. I was going to hold the B push though. No, no, I'm taking the B rush. Let me lead this. Somebody smoke middle, just at the start. Yeah, I got it, I got it. This is very cool because what Irukandi just said is that he's going to try and fake the B rush, which is something they've been doing for a while. So it's not unreasonable to assume that maybe Navi is going to react really quickly to this and just try and rotate some more people over here. And in fact, well, they already got Guardian pretty close by. So if Irukandi just stop well, maybe that'll actually work out. He's going to run into Guardian here and he takes him down. Ooh. And that's a great opening kill. Now, the only one defending here is actually Senia. He's got a smoke out. If they rush through, they got him. And they will. It's a difficult spot to be able to hold. But look at this. Senya able to completely spray down two players now. That's allowing his teammates to con to rotate over if needed. Yeah, Senya, the stand-in, doing some fine job here for Navi. Well, Iokandi goes down. It's Shroud and Desi left. And now all of a sudden it's looking pretty good for Navi. I thought this was going to work out great for Manajuma. Setting up now. They know that they're still. They haven't moved as of yet. I don't know if uh, Sinya spotted the bomb or not. They've been able to make it over there towards that horseshoe area. Grenade rains in. They take one down. They're not done yet. Shroud's going to peek in. Gets another one. Now it's a one on two and almost gets the spray through, but not quite. Navi's going to take him down, and it will be 5 7 for the scoreline here. I actually think, and this is going to be a problem because Manajuma don't have much money at, at all, but I think it's going to be really important right now for, uh, for, for Manajuma to keep Navi on five rounds. I think if Navi get more than five rounds in this first half, it's going to be really tough come second half. I think they agree with you. You can see that uh, they've kind of bought whatever they, a little bit. They, they allowed themselves to keep about a grand uh, in the bank there. They'll be able to buy for the next round, regardless of whether or not they win or lose. They'll have an additional 1,900 to bounce off of. But right now, let's see what they decide to do. That fire is going to cause a lot of damage. Finally, Minnick are able to take down Starks, but Starks did 
take out two throughout that process. Guardian is down, Seuss coming up from behind, gets a great double kill, and that leaves Shroud alone in a pretty bad situation here. They don't even wait for him, I like that. Seuss taking matters into his own hands, gets a quick triple, and that's gonna make it 6-7 here. Right approach, just challenging, making sure that you take him out. You know that uh, he has to be forced out of that uh, the hole there and being able to pick up that kill. 7-6 right now. And so far, see what they decided to do. They actually didn't give themselves enough money to be, to buy this secondary round, so they're going to have to save again uh, with these P250s. So wow. that sort of calls into question the idea of buying that 1AK in the previous round, because yes. I actually thought they had it calculated as well, maybe, so they could have spread the money a little bit more, but now it just seems weird. Well, that, uh, well I guess the one of the players had two grand. It would have dropped, it gave them 30, uh, 3,900 which is only enough for him to buy. Zeus trying to figure out how to work with the uh, the distance nades. <laughs> yeah, well, he's got the spray down, all right. He's going to go down eventually, but the bomb's dropped in the middle, and it's just D-Born left. He's going to get taken down by Guardian, and that actually equalizes the score. 7-7 seven, seven here, and we're into the last round of the first half in the first map of this best of three. So there's still plenty to come, but um, I don't know. It's hard to call this game already, really. Yeah, Na'Vi, though, he's, uh, they're already able to take matters into their hands there, tying things up 7-7. Seven, seven. And I agree with you, this is kind of a... There's times where it could be a T-sided map, especially because of the time that it takes you to rotate from site to site. And yeah. so we'll see what they decide to do here. Zeus is going to play aggressive again, that, utilizing that smoke, slowing them down, and pushing all the way up there towards that vent side. Yeah, and he's going to walk right into Shroud, and Shroud is going to come out on top. Now, that's great. They get the kill so early, still a minute and 20 seconds left. They can do whatever they want for the time here, and it's going to be on Na'Vi to try and figure out a good setup. Well, Zeus, again, he played aggressive, pushed all the way up there inside of mid, but they heard him run towards the Vince. That's why Shroud was ready to go uh, once he turned the corner inside of Vince. Senia going to be walking right into Deborn. He's looking the wrong way, and actually, Deborn's looking the wrong way, too. Now he's going to turn around. It's a bit of a weird one-on-one -on -one battle here. Guardian drops one in the middle of the map. We'll see. Now back to a four-on-four, -four, and Senia bringing you back to a four-on-three. Oh, that's a shame. Jumas, they, they got to get this next kill here. Nice flashbang over, and Desi uh, will not be able to protect, but Shroud will be there. So now it's going to be down to this two-on-three, pushing here inside of the A site. A long rotate from Starix. Uh, but you have it on the other side. Senya's right next to the bomb planter. He will get the bomb down, but falls directly into the pit. So even with 5 HP, he's still causing damage. And now it's going to be down to this one on two in the site. And uh, you did have Starks on the flank, but he won't uh, be necessary for this round. Eight to seven is going to be your first half score in favor of Na'Vi, even though Manajuma started off extremely strong. And it's Senia with the triple kill at the end, using the smoke so well to just hide right here. And the bomb was planted right in front of me. Absolutely right. That was absolutely fantastic. So, well, I don't know what to say. I mean, the fact that Senia is playing this well, it's actually pretty surprising to me. Because Senia was never really the star fragger of, of the team when he was an active player. And obviously, he's been spending most of his time actually casting Counter-Strike uh, yes. on his channel rather than, than playing. So standing in for Edward, it's a really big role to fill out for him. But he's doing a, a fine job so far. Well, at times, it's, it's good to step back and kind of watch other players play Counter-Strike. And it really gives you a different type of perspective on the game. And so it could have worked in his benefit to really start to overanalyze or to analyze other players and their techniques and what's possible and so he can really adapt his own game so even though he's been casting other games and having fun in his twitch channel as you look at it it may have been beneficial to him because he can stop focusing on i need to do this for myself but really look at the counter-strike overall again so again t just kind of taking that lens and pull it back and look at the whole picture and then he can go right back into his own play style it's definitely very interesting to see. And now I think a manager would don't win this pistol round. I don't think Navi are going to stop. I think they need to win this pistol round and then just put on the uh, the pressure afterwards. They got some really cool grenades set up. Look at this. They're ready for Navi. d going to spot the first. Grenades are going to follow. There's the one. There's the next one. But Seuss is there for the kill. d picking up the one and he's out of bullets. Now it's going to be on Desi alone. Five bullets, two bullets. He's going to go down. And this is working out great for Navi. Yeah, and Shroud's still on a very long rotate, finally getting over there to join up uh, into the action. Bunch Starks is going to be right there. And I agree that Na'Vi is not going to let up. So far, we've seen four players that are playing really well there for Na'Vi. 
uh, sees is just kind of taking, uh, seizing the opportunities that he gets. And so right now, uh, they're playing well. They're, they're fun to watch at this point. They are fun to watch, but I love that setup for Mana Juma. I love the idea that they had the two grenades right here. They could bounce them down of this wall and down into where the terrorists were coming. It, that should have worked much well, better, I well, think. Well, the, the downside to that is the only way you can trigger that uh, that defense, the defense, is by spotting or hearing somebody. By the time you spot them, they're already around the corner, and those nades are going to be too late. You end up nading your own teammate, or you have it you may, may nade too far. But right now you can see that Irakaji trying to play aggressive. He's going to get dropped there by Sinya. And so now it's going to be down to this two on five. But so what I'm, what I'm getting at here is that nade, even though it's a great angle for where they're at, there's no way to call out that they're in that area to nade that spot. You just have yeah. to go off the initial. And if people, if the Navi team like they did walked up towards those stairs, you wouldn't have been able to spot them until the, it's too close or too, uh, at the very end, whenever you should have already thrown the nade by now. There was a third man in that bomb site. I'm, I'm, I really, I'm going to go back and watch the demo on this because I really want to know if they, if they had a different plan altogether. I want to know if they had the plan to have someone out here. Yes, I can agree with through. that. I can agree with that one. But and I'm he, wondering if they wanted to do that because Navi came really fast, so yes. maybe they didn't even have time to do that right. setup. Because you're right, it does make sense that way. We're going to have to check up on that later. Right now, it's a three-round lead for Navi, and it's going to be Manajuma on yet another eco round here. They just can't afford the the rifles. No, you're you're definitely right on the fact if they if that third player was in position, then that would be a great play because he could make that early call to make that and to allow them to know that that nade needs to be thrown. So this is that player being able to spot that. Yeah. But by the time he probably approached this area, they were already passed through that area. Yeah, I think that's very yeah. likely what happened. But still, that's an incredibly cool pistol round strategy, even if it didn't work. I still think that's cool. I want to see that actually work in, in, in another game. Well, the reason why we break it down so much is because they needed that round. Menajumas needed to pick up the pistol round to help bring them back into the situation. They were leading at one point, I believe, four to one. And then after that, they started losing rounds. And we ended with an eight, seven. It would have been beneficial for Manajumas to pick up that pistol round. And so that way they can kind of slow down the momentum that Navi has. But right now, you have to look out as Guardian already has that op in hand. And now we're seeing something that we didn't talk about beforehand, but maybe we could have talked about beforehand, which is that Navi is probably the slowest uh, T side team there is. They they always just inch their way forward, no speed at all, and that's what we're seeing right here. Slowly creeping into the B bomb site. Although C's does go down to D bomb now. Oh, Desi actually get that shot in. That's a nice, and that means they can. Can they pick up a rifle? Did he have any rifle? Yeah, they he, they have an AK, so that's good. But actually winning the round is different. Question. Yeah, they're going to be rotating around here. Zeus is going to be right there picking up two. And so now it's going to be left up to DeBorn with this AK. Takes down Starix. That's some good damage done. Now just run away and save the AK. I think that's the best case scenario. And already Navia, they're out for the hunt. But this is a pretty big map to find someone in. Well, let's see what decide where he likes to play hide and seek at here. Senny is the closest one, but it's getting co it's getting cooler for him here. He's walking the wrong way. Uh, not going to happen. All right, then. Well, it's going to be uh, into the fourth round of the second half in Manajuma. They start off with an AK. That's pretty good. But they need they need a lot more, and they're going to put Minica on the AWP against Guardian. If they're going to both go to the middle, that'll be interesting. So we'll hop on board here with Minica and see if he can get a mid pick. He is going to be challenging, but at this time, you really you have to. You can't just, uh, you have to look at it, your opponent as just another player that you've been playing against time and time again. You can't look at it the fact that it is Guardian. And he <laughs> will get completely smoked out. That will pull him back. Yeah, I love this really aggressive style coming out. They know Navi are going to be playing slow, so they're just going to walk in. There's a pop flash. Seized is in the corner. Shroud jumping up. He's going to jump down. Oh, no. He does get taken down. That should have been the opening. Ebon gets the one, but Seuss is there with the return, and Navi... Are they, I'm not sure they were ready for that, but they ended up adjusting anyway. Shroud, Shroud and Deborn had the right idea. That flashbang was great by Deborn, popping around. Shroud was able to peek off of it. He continued to peek. It was just whenever he hopped up on top of concrete that he was just too high on his angle. Mitiker actually taking down Guardian at a different point over there towards that catwalk side. And so that's going to slow down uh, Starks, who had picked up that AWP from Guardian. Yeah, so here comes a, a flash over the top. Maybe they possibly a smoke towards that J-Hall, forcing uh, Minikur out of that position now. 
Here, Kandi in a great spot, but Seuss will still take him down, and that leaves Minika alone. Three people are going to be coming for him, and the backup from Desi is miles away. He goes down, and the round is over like that. It's just too much of a distance to cover here. Desi might as well just stay and relax over here. Yeah, you I don't know, but to be honest, the, the pistol setup that they had and the, the flash that we saw right here b bouncing all the way down, that's good. I think that's actually a really good sign that Manajuma have probably practiced this map a lot. I think that's something you can only do if you've been if you've really been putting in the, the effort. The, there's just the one side to it, right? So you can execute the strat, the idea, all in play. It could be perfect, but you still have to get the kill. <laughs> and that's where yes. things are coming into play. That's exactly right. Navi right now on the killing side are doing a little bit better here. Seuss with actually 19, which in itself was a surprise. Seuss not normally the guy I'd look for to top frag on this team. Uh, probably put it to Seized and Guardian actually to be the two top fraggers right now. And Seized not really playing to his usual level, but um, I think that might be the map uh, coming into play here. Yeah, so we'll see. And you also, of course, we were just coming off of the first half on that CT side, so your opportunities to get those picks are limited to where the attack happens. And so Seize, I believe he got caught in a lot of rotation, having to rotate from site to site, which is a lot more difficult than just holding your position uh, and defending that site. So right now we can see that their plan of attack here this round is uh, they're allowing, <laughs> oh wow, the perfect situation is where they're gonna be heading over there towards that B side. Uh, they will clear out. So this may work out for Metajumas in terms of they can clear this area out. They immediately know that they're not inside the A side, and they can start to rotate early over here. And so far, you're right. I mean, they do realize, wait a minute, there's nobody middle. And Kanji's here to cover the vents. He realized nobody there. But by the time they do, I mean, Seize is kind of slow with the bomb, but smokes are up everywhere. Oh my god, there's a lot of smoking going on. So this is almost impossible. I'd want Deborn and Desi at least to run and hide somewhere. The rest can go and sacrifice the, their, their CSAT 75s on exit kills if they want to. Yeah, actually, you can see that they do have a buddy system that's going on there with Desi. Uh, I believe that yeah, they've got a full buddy system. Everyone's there. It's a whole team team effort now, They're trying to be able to take down these weapons. The so Shroud's going to rush over or make that Eric Kanji's going to pick up that AK. He's going to fall back. Shroud's going to fall there to Guardian, slowing them down. So now you can see Deborn saying, "No, I'll challenge here. Make sure that that they don't come and get you." And so right there, he's going to go ahead and get taken out. But a good effort there, slowing them down putting the bumps in the road to make sure that Irukandji and Desi can hold on to these rifles here. Was that one of those go on without me kind of moments? In the I got this. Yeah. I got this. <laughs> Tell my family I love them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay right here with the C set 75 with only 12 bullets against these three people. All right. 13 to 7 is what we're I've looking at. I've seen crazier things. <laughs> well, it could happen. You never know. But no, you he was know. definitely not planning to stay alive now. <laughs> He was waiting for the napalm to sort of, you know, That's right. rush down on him like that. All right, Minica AWP again. This is another buy round for Manajuma. And in the middle, actually, a great position. He misses that shot, and I don't think he should have. So that's a little bit unfortunate. But now he's going to fall back, and that's probably the right move. So oh. let's take a look here and we'll see where Eric Kanji is actually. He's boosted up on the very on edge. No, th there's that little particle that you see there. Could you not see it underneath his foot? It definitely could. <laughs> A tiny pixel, and oh, are we not going to see this? He's it's on the a, wrong side. It's a side. nail that didn't get hammered in all the way. Yeah, well, that is some, some pretty amazing uh, play It's a good right balancing there. act that he has going on. Oh, and actually, he will pick up the kill, but he's going to do it by jumping all the way around and backstabbing Senny, and now he's going to be running through the smoke, and he's got to slow it down. Starks is right here. He turns around and gets the kill, even if a little bit slow. And now it's a three-on-three. Three. The bomb is on the way to the B bomb site, and all of Manajuma is uh, all on the other side of the map. Over rotating. Sometimes, whenever you get caught up in the moment, you start to over rotate, thinking way too much, and just really each smoke, each flash will really draw in many Jumas at this point. But it is down to a two on two. You can see Guardian up on top has that op in hand. He's going to take a look down this long haul. Yep, and no way he's going to miss that shot. He gets the one, goes for a second, and Shroud will take him down. That's an important kill. Oh, and he's just a little bit too slow. Starix had the right angle, picks up a double kill, and that's going to be another round for Na'Vi. And that was maybe one of the last chances that Manajuma are going to have. They actually have some, some good money on Deepon and Yurikanji, so they're going to be able to buy up this round anyway, but it's they're running out of rounds to play around with here. Yeah, at this point, it's no longer about the economy for them. It's about winning rounds to start to make an impact. I mean, you're, you are at tie point at this uh, juncture in the game here with Na'Vi. 
But as we see, started to set up, and they're pushing over there towards that B side right away. Let's see, I'm really curious if we can figure out who, who chose this map, because I really want to know that right now. But uh, we'll see if we can get information for you. Shroud, well, covering all the way over by the horseshoe. So looking at it, well, the, in the brackets, Metajuma is the higher seed over Na'Vi. Mm -hmm. And if I recall, I believe that they'll that allows them to have the first pick for the map. And so I believe that Manajuma's out of the selection after they had uh, vetoed certain maps. We have gotten down to season here, and I believe Manajuma's were probably the first one to choose that. They wanted to ensure that they picked up the first round or the first map. Um, and then I believe that Dust 2 was actually selected uh, there by Na'Vi, and Inferno's going to be a tough one. If they, if they get to that if they get to that point, and Dust Two is going to be tough as well with Guardian uh, yeah. opening on Dust Two. I, if you unleash Guardian on Dust Two, really really terrible things can happen to your team. But I mean, we've seen Guardian fail on Dust Two before, so I don't know. I'm not going to call it just yet. But I I think Manajuma maybe were hoping that they can pick up this map, and that's a great grenade. Desi's down, and now the bomb is going to be planted unless Irukanji can somehow stop this alone, and he's going to get smoked off as well. Uh, we said it was a T-sided map, and th there's reasons why. The time that it takes you to rotate, the areas that can get smoked off extremely quick, uh, fast for these players. So even while they're rotating, they're getting delayed. And so there's a lot of imp moments that can impact the CT side. And uh, yeah, they're just getting dropped one by one. Yeah, time's running out. Seuss is actually on fire inside that smoke. Weirdly, Shroud is going in, getting a good kill. Actually, second kill coming in. Now sees this alone. They need to put Shroud on defusing, and the other guy just covering him. They're going to smoke it off. And there it is. Seize goes down to D-Born. So nicely done. Double kill for each of them. And that was uh, that was pretty much what they needed to do. I was worried then because it looked like they were both trying to challenge Seized at the same time. And there was no reason to do that. Well, no some, sometimes just raw talent comes out, and you start picking up kills as you need it. And so right there, Deborn playing very well in this yeah. game, sitting at 23 and 14, the most kills in the entire game right now. That's incredible, isn't it? And he was not the guy. I mean, I said, I said, I still think Shroud is the is the guy to watch here. But right now, Deborn is pretty much outshining everybody else, so that's very impressive. And now it looks like they're going to go for that aggressive push again, and I like it. See if they can make it work this time, though. It's Deborn leading the charge. He goes down, and then Shroud is alone. See Great that nade. That at that point, you're you're just you're just trying to you're overthinking things if you're throwing out that many nades. Yeah, and that's I mean that's gonna be it, isn't it? Five on two. You're well, right. <laughs> we watched that last round where it's a two on four and they somehow came back, but they're gonna be smart this time and save their weapons for that. Uh, make sure that they can hopefully push this into an overtime right now. That is what they're looking for. But I think you're right. If you're trying to throw out grenades, I mean. Even if it doesn't kill you, they're, they're definitely going to land behind the enemy team. Yeah. Nice shot there by Eric Kanji. Just getting them on the rotate. They of course, are. that also tells them exactly where he's at. Oh, is he going to shoot through the railing? He's going to get the chance to do That's it anyway. That's a tough shot. Yeah, it's going to be really fast. He gets the one right there. Hmm. Makes you wish you'd seen your Kanji orb a little bit more in this game. But he's going to save the AWP and they save the M4. But you're right, they're looking for seven straight rounds in a row. Well, two of his eight kills came there at the very end. So he hasn't been playing as well as he should have been. Uh, but he uh, probably dropped the AWP back over there for... No, he's going to keep it this time. He's actually probably saying, hey, I'm, let me give it, give me a shot. I'll utilize this hop here. And Miniker is actually going to watch inside of mid with a FAMAS. So we'll see the rotate here, and Irukandji gets the upper hand on Guardian. Yeah, goes for one more shot. Oh, oh man. Misses the top of the head, gonna follow up with a grenade though, and turns around, he's gonna need some backup. And, well, the backup's gone, but there's Debon with the C set 75, taking one out. So things are looking good here. And you know, seven rounds in a row sounds like a lot, but if they can force Navi to eco, then it's a different question altogether. Senia and Starix left alone. 2 on 4 and Starix is going to go for an AK instead. Senia has one. They have plenty of time, but only now are they going to go back and pick up the bomb here. So they are, I don't know, they're still far away from a bomb side at this point. So right now you can see that Irukhan, she's trying to, just making some really insane angles. 
making it very difficult for him to, to make a shot. I mean, of course, he's just looking for a cross to make a call out so his teammates can quickly rotate. But really, he doesn't know that they're right there next to him. And his teammate will be able to help him out with that. Desi dropping a fire, but that again is falling behind the teammate or falling behind the enemy there. And so now Starks doing exactly what he should try to do. He will get taken down. But that was a smart move by Starks, just knowing that, uh, knowing the situation, just trying to get the bomb planted. They do have the economy regardless uh, of whether or not he got that bomb planted. Yeah. But it'll help them as they go along. Exactly, and I actually think that's why that last kill from Desi was so important because. Yeah, Na'Vi can buy this round anyway, but eventually, if it stacks up, if Na'Vi get more rounds in where they actually plant the bomb, then, yeah, they'll have a, maybe another buy round at the end. That could be the difference between overtime and no overtime here. If Jumas do this, that's going to be crazy. Six more rounds to go for them, and they need to make no mistakes. So now you can see that Shroud again watching this uh, really tight angle just to make the call out. Yeah. Guardian watching the flank. And this time, hopefully, he's not going to throw any grenades. Just fall back. I'd almost say don't buy any nades. <laughs> and I don't know why he decided to shoot there. We may have missed just uh, a glimpse of something there. Yeah. But he is uh, very timid at the, this point. They're going to go peek the middle. Minica is right here. He's also just looking for somebody. They're really not trying to challenge much. But he wants the information anyway. See if he can spot anyone. He's going to fall back, and now the smokes are going to rain into the A bomb site. Definitely shaping up to be an A push here from Navi. But Deborn and Shroud both in the horseshoe just waiting. See, he's going to take down one. And See, again, immediately followed. just going to the nade and hoping that. And then he's going to get taken down from the other side. Oh, actually, Shroud is going to be right there. He does take down uh, Starks, and then you also are on board with. Uh, Miniker there. Now it's going back and forth, and you know what? It ended up allowing his teammates to rotate. That fire, though, again, it just it's just that panic nade yeah. as uh, he was falling back. But uh, this time, he does make an awesome shot. Again, I think if he relied strictly on his aim and forget about his nades, we probably wouldn't be in the situation that we're seeing right now. Yeah, I think actually you're right. Yeah, that's really dangerous. Obviously, Senia ended up stopping, but if he had just rushed out right here and just kept pushing, I mean, yeah, he'd take, you know, 20, 30 damage from the fire, but Shroud would be dead. Well, it, the, the fact is, is what I, what I was getting at is not the fact that he would push through the fire, but is that he was holding that grenade in his hand just enough. That time that it takes you to switch from your rifle to a grenade is enough time for a pro player to take you out, especially whenever you're backpedaling. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 he should have died, what I was, I guess what I was getting at, by, but he didn't. Oh, Ebon being surrounded here, getting a good kill in, going for another one. He has to get one more kill and he oh, will wow. take down one. And that's important now. Grenade is going to rain in through, but they're not going to be able to take down Guardian. Still a bomb plant here. They know that uh, they have Senya that's inside the site. He's going to get fall there. Now it's going to be left up to Guardian. Down to a one on two here against Miniker as well as Shroud. Uh, they have not planted the bomb. Bomb's actually down on the back side over there. He's trying to look for that op so he can get that peek over the top. Yeah, he really wants it. Now he, knows ex now he knows exactly where that op's at, also knows where the bomb is at. Lots time. of time, yes, exactly. I don't know about this. He's actually going to go oh, they know exactly. on the oh. outside of the raiding hitch, looking for Minica spraying through. That's a good round after all. And Minica with the AWP taking down three players. That was a save there for Na'Vi to push in around there. And so now we'll see. They've got Guardian who has the AWP back in hand here. How many rounds in a row is it for Manajuma? So it's three rounds in a row, so... Navi's consecutive round loss bonus is starting to kick up as well, which yep. means even with just a, well, actually 600 is pretty not quite enough, but they're going to be able to buy for a, for a, a lot more now that they're losing so many rounds. Well, that's it's it works to their benefit that they had the lead, especially on the T side. Midiker trying to get that pick over there inside of mid. Uh, they are going for a double op strat here for Manajumas, and that, of course, the secondary op is right there with Irakanji. He will make the call out saying that the bomb is down over here. Gets blinded and still trying to make that shot, and he realizes that the bomb has been taken away there uh, by Starks. If they would have got that second kill, that would have been incredible. Look at Deep on spraying through the smoke. Zeus is down. That is a huge kill coming in here. Now it's a five on three, and now we, they've they've made no progress at all so far in this round. All they've done is push up and lost players. They haven't done any damage at all. Minica smartly covering the middle here. If anyone tries to come up... Oh, seized. Are you kidding me? Is he really going to be able to walk in? Oh, he's walking with his back. Minica just waiting patiently. 
and he's going to be able to take the kill. That looked really funny. Yeah, so far, down to this two on five. Guardian's going to get taken down. And so earlier in this first half, Guardian was playing extremely well, making some really nice shots, but now he's kind of cooled off a little bit, especially after the op went into the hands of Ir Kanji. And two. Yeah, let's try and do a listen in on uh, manager just to see what's happening on their ventral. No, I don't think so. I don't see Play 3B this round again. There you go. Yo, I'm going to watch for that yeah. for, uh, no, just play two tunnel again. I would watch for that middle. for Kyle sub middle. I'm going to go up um, from lane. All right. I think I managed to save Ventrilo, which shows how old I am. Yeah, and they're in Mumble, though. They're in Mumble. Grenade <laughs> comes out. Navi waiting here. And Senior actually takes the first kill. Second grenade to follow. And Desi, oh, he should have been able to spray down a couple of people then. This And this is that... that, that Swift punch in the face here by Na'Vi. It's just a save round for them, so they don't care. And so they're going to push around here. Now it's going to be Eric Kanji with a nice shot there, playing pretty well there with that USP. Now Guardian with the P250 takes down two. It's going to be down to this one-on-one. -on -one. And that's actually going to pull Eric Kanji off of the defuse. He's going to challenge with this P250 look out. He's got an op in hand, missing that shot. That nade's going to be just on the other side. He will be able to go for the defuse, and he will get taken down. You are kidding. It was just a save round there for Na'Vi, and they didn't even care about picking up that round. But in the end, just a swift kick in the face is enough to <laughs> knock them out.